Freeze My Drip Gaming here, and if you want to get better with a specific Northguard clan, then my How To Northguard series is perfect for you. Today we will be going over the Clan of the Squirrel. I'll tell you about the features and starting bonuses of the Squirrel Clan. We will also go over the build order. I'll let you guys know the preferred lore order, and lastly I'll talk about the military path for the Squirrel. Before we jump into it, thanks for all the support and comments and subscribers. I started making videos back in May thinking nothing of it, and the feedback I've received from this community has been amazing. I took a couple months off making videos to spend time with my family and focus on my job, but it's my goal to finish out this series by the end of the year. That being said, make sure you like and subscribe, it'll really help out the channel and the support will allow me to put more time and effort into my videos. I also have some affiliate links from Amazon in the description below. Just clicking on the links helps out the channel a lot. And before we get started, make sure you guys check out Mahout Twitch TV. He has a YouTube channel. He makes Northguard videos as well. He streams on Twitch and uh, he's one of my buddies who helped me out with the Squirrel Clan because he actually played a ton of Squirrel before I even learned how to play Squirrel and uh, gave me a bunch of good tips and tricks on it. So make sure you guys give him some support too. I'll have a link to his channel in the description below. Let's begin. Squirrel has a two star difficulty to learn, a three star development, a one star military, and a three star support. Some of the starting bonuses are the clan doesn't feast but instead gathers ingredients in its territory. Different zones allow you to gather different ingredients, and each of the meals require different ingredients. The stove replaces the brewery which allows you to cook meals, but villagers become cooks to gather more ingredients and to generate more happiness. Your war chief can also be assigned to stoves to produce more ingredients and your chief benefits from cook's tool upgrades. Two months before winter squirrel gains a fall production bonus of 30 percent but during the winter they consume more food and wood than other clans it's really important for squirrel that you don't build during the fall and wait till winter or spring to build squirrel also has a special victory type unique to their clan the squirrel relic lays roots down in the zone the relic is placed in and every four months the roots spread to a new zone units in the zones with roots gain periodic production bonuses enemy units in a zone with roots have a chance to pick a fight with their own kind for five seconds for fame bonuses at 200 fame squirrel achieves a helping hand. Receives ingredients of each type by boat and increases ingredient storage by 200. You can now cook meals for your allies and unlock gift routes through trading posts. At 500 fame, you have plot for the throne. You gain fame based on your extra population compared to your most populous opponent. Arrival of new villagers increased by 5% every 100 fame. The main focus of Squirrel is food and population growth. That's where the power of their economy comes from. After playing many hours of Squirrel, you want to be able to colonize as many zones as possible. Meals cost ingredients and food to cook, and that's why it's very important to focus on food. The more zones you can control, the more ingredients you'll receive, and the more meals you can cook. At Squirrel, you want to be mealing as much as possible. The meals consist of venison and ratatouille, which adds food, wood, and gold depending on the power, and one or two months depending on the duration. Fish soup, which adds lore and villager arrival speed faster depending on the power. Breaded fish fillets, which increases forging and mining speed. Speed. Meat stew, which we need to do every winter after the first winter to reduce food and wood consumption during winter, and increase scouting speed. And scouts are immune to damage while scouting. Seafood buffet increases defensive power and increases projectile resistance. Forest barbecue increases attack power and military units gain more military experience. On the screen you'll see the costs of each meal. And the food costs increase with the number of villagers you are trying to meal. The first winter you want to cook fish stew to generate lore so you're able to reach cooking mastery as quick as possible. After the first winter, you'll meal yourself with venison and ratatouille, which is considered the eco meal and is the most common meal. At 200 fame, you'll be able to start mealing your teammates if you have the food productions and reserves to do so. Just eco meal your teammates unless they ask for something specific. During winters, make sure you have meat stew up and running to save resources. As squirrel, you'll want to meal constantly and it's about 15 days to prepare a meal, so make sure you start cooking your next meal 15 days before the next one runs out for max efficiency. The difference between a good squirrel and an average squirrel player is resource management for meals. Time for the build order. First is a scout camp, then start building a house as you reach 50% to your next villager when your population is at 5 out of 6. Next, a woodcutter's lodge, either on your main tile or hopefully you have a forest. If you are not playing online with a clear clan, you'll have to kill neutrals yourself, so you have to build a training camp. You'll want a longship dock on the main tile to help generate lore. Next is food, and you want two food buildings, and if you're lucky, they will be the same type, but build one food building for now. Your population will be close to 11 out of 11, so you'll have to build another house. Now, you'll need a second woodcutter's. If you lose a few units clearing or when neutrals enter your zone, you can usually build the second woodcutters before the house, but don't let your population get locked. By now it's winter or almost winter, so get down a stove. Next you can cook fish soup during the winter, but make sure you don't build during the fall. After the stove, build your second food building. Before the winter is over, build your stone mine and start mining stone. Build two food silos next. If your population is locked again, build another house. Get down another stove, and then next is the iron mine. After that, a second longship dock. Get a forge down and start upgrade. We will go over the upgrade order later. Get another house down 
and get started on mining your second stone, then another house, and then a second iron mine. One last house for your sixth house, which should give you a population limit of 38. Lastly, build camps. Usually you want to have a war band from 6 to 10 units. Remember, your goal is to buff your teammates with meals so that their eco can outwork the opponents and they have the larger armies. You can support them with small armies, but the main focus is mealing, which in return will be your main gold production. Time for the lore order. Your goal is to get to cooking mastery as quick as possible, which is at the end of the top tree. That means that your first lore you want is sharp axes. If you don't have a clear on your team or you're playing single player, you may want nightmare kitchen first to get your chief right away to prevent from being attacked by wolves early game. After axes, you'll want stockpiling, which allows food silos to not take a building space and plus one food and wood for each 100 in storage level. After that is recruitment. High population is crucial for squirrel and recruitment goes hand in hand with squirrel. After recruitment, you'll grab cooking mastery. After cooking mastery, you'll go into economics, which is on the bottom tree. If you didn't get it early, grab Nightmare Kitchen to get your chief for free and use him on the stove to generate more ingredients. To further maximize your food, you want eradication, and then you'll be able to upgrade food silos after this floor. Then grab shipbuilding or coinage, depending on what gold building you decided on. For the stone upgrade order, your first 10 goes towards the town hall, then you'll upgrade both your food buildings. You want to grab George's blessing for your first blessing for the extra iron and stone. You'll use that to upgrade one of your stoves. Once you started mining your second stone, use that stone to upgrade your second stove and both your food silos. Squirrel can scout for the team, but it could possibly slow down the meals. For the iron upgrades, you want to upgrade both your food units, then your sailors and cooks. After that, I upgrade warriors or axe throwers, and once you mine your second stone, you can go for relic. Some people like early relic, but it delays meals. I advise against it. Usually I throw the relic on my main tile and it gets to one or two tiles before the game is decided. Now for the military path. For squirrel, you want guardian. Having an extra militia to help you protect your tiles and using your watchtowers to gain more experience and gives you more warband allows squirrel to maximize its tile production without having to worry about having enough camps. Also, Guardian pairs well with Squirrel's Relic, making it a sneaky defensive clan with a larger population, watchtowers, and a relic that can cause enemies to attack oneself. Overall, Squirrel is a very powerful clan. With coordination from your team, you can easily use meals to dominate your opponents. When I stack with my friends, we play against the Squirrel, we almost always mirror Squirrel because we're at such a disadvantage when one team is getting mealed all game on top of feasts. The only downside to Squirrel is you're somewhat dependent on your teammates, which can make it a lot harder to play at lower glory point levels. Squirrel is a very strong, unique clan that can boost their team into being overwhelmingly stronger than their opponents. Don't forget to follow my socials at FreezeMyDrip on Twitter, Instagram, and social media. Thanks for watching. See you next time.